This is um, Station ID, R.D. Roberto, and this is my talk for High Point Life Church of Klang, Malaysia, for Pastor Stephen for their October uh, 17, 2021 uh, message or event recorded. And I'll be there live via Zoom for the Q&A together with my wife, Miriam Kiambao. Okay, <clears throat> so we'll start recording the message. In three, two, one. Hello. Okay, one more time. In three, two, one. Hello, High Point Life Church in Klang, Malaysia, and all those from other parts of the world listening to this message. Thank you to my dear friend, Pastor Stephen, for this invitation. It is an honor to be with you, albeit in spirit, virtually, you know, the only thing I wish is that my wife, Miriam, and I could be there in person to deliver God's message for all of us today. And so that we could all fellowship fellowship, and eat afterwards together. Because, you know, if you have Filipino friends, you know that we love to fellowship and eat. In fact, we eat six or seven times a day. Yes, there's breakfast, then merienda, which is like a snack. Then lunch, and then we have merienda again, and then there's dinner, okay, and then merienda or midnight snack. That's six, okay. And during the Christmas season, there's what we have simbangabe or midnight mass uh, for for those in the Catholic Church. So we 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 sometimes join what happens afterwards, which is the early morning meal of rice cakes before breakfast. So there's such a thing as a puto bumbung, you know, the yellow uh, the, the yellow and purple uh, kind of rice cakes that we have. So anyway, the point is, in the Philippines, we love to eat and there's a lot of food. So let me know if and when you'll be in Manila, maybe after this pandemic is over, and come and eat with us. And if you don't have a ticket or a place to stay in Manila, then you know what, just call me. And we'll pray for you. <laughs> okay. So praise the Lord. Yes, He provides for everything. Yes. Amen and amen. So the title of my message uh, for, for, for you all for today is this. That Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Yes. Or another alternative title is this. Starting from zero again. A new way of living the blessings of the pandemic. Yes. And my hope is that this message encourages those of you who are back to zero or almost zero, perhaps because of this pandemic. Or you feel that your life, uh, your life battery is close to no bat or zero. And, you know, there are many who are like that. They have nothing left to give. There's no more fight, no more spirit, zero, zero hope. And so they become depressed, anxious, and worried. And if that's not you, then I'm sure you know someone who is. The WHO says that aside from this COVID pandemic, there is another pandemic coming, if it's not already here, and it's the mental health pandemic. Not just adults are going to be affected by this mental health pandemic, but also children, everybody. Well, almost everybody, I hope. Because Jesus said, that the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come to give you life and life to the fullest. That's what Jesus said in his word in John chapter 10, verse 10. You probably know that by heart. Because Jesus' design is for us to have a full, a full life, even though we may have nothing left because of this pandemic. No more money, no more patience, no more energy, zero. But wait, that actually could be good, right? What do you think? More or less, do you think that less is more? So maybe you can type in your own chat box if you agree so that I know that you're with me, okay? But my prayer is that by the end of this message, you and I will realize that zero is not that bad. You know, as a starting point, it's actually good because yes, Less is more because less can be blessed. 
<laughs> yes, and this pandemic is a blessing because, or could be a blessing, because God can use it to teach us all that less is more. And that there is a new way of living that is available to us who believe in Jesus and his promises. So are you ready to discover? Are you ready to discover that together? If that is yes, then that's good. Because during this pandemic, I have rediscovered that the less money and resources that you have in starting a new life or a new business or any endeavor at all, you know, the more creative and hardworking and dependent you become on God. Yes, I'll repeat that again, okay? I discovered that the less money and resources that you have in starting a new life or a new business or any endeavor, the more creative, hardworking, and the more dependent you become on God. And that's wonderful. So, may I share with you two quick stories uh, with you to illustrate my thesis. <clears throat> First story. Many, many years ago when I was 27, um, this was back in 1994, I ventured into business. I became an entrepreneur. <clears throat> and I opened, together with a partner, a retail store in, in the south of the Philippines, all the way in Calgendi Oro City in, in Mindanao. And <clears throat> later on, to promote that business, that retail business, we turns out that it's, you know, it's more difficult than we, we thought it would be. My partner and I decided to organize and promote you know, a big concert uh, with one of the most popular singers who happened to be a Christian. And, and then at that time, mind you, I was into New Age. Um, I grew up with religion, but there was no relationship with the one true living God. In fact, at that time, I was secretly shopping around for a religion that would serve and fit my desire to have many wives. <laughs> yeah. So that meant Christianity was out of the picture. But I didn't mind. You know, I believe that all roads led to heaven. And as long as you're basically a good person who didn't murder or rape people, you would get to heaven. And my business partner and I were so sure that we would make a lot of money with the concert we were promoting, as well as promoting the store, um, <clears throat> that, that um, we were so excited. We were so excited about the sure success about this venture, and we dreamed about the fame and the fortune that would come with it. You know, I was a young man of 25 or 26 years old, and that's what excited me. But instead, the concert venture was the most successful failure ever in my life. We lost all of our money in the concert promotion business and instead of promoting our retail store, we had to sell the store to pay off all our debts. Yes, we got into debt. We had lost all our savings and was back to zero. In Tagalog, wala. Like in Spanish, nada. But that was okay, actually, because it was there at the concert that where I had this encounter with Jesus. It was there at the concert where I first encountered the word, you know, sung to me in a song by the concert artist who I mentioned to be, who was a Christian, a born-again Christian. And he used the words and um, <clears throat> the scripture from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6 in his song, Take Me Out of the Dark. And it goes like this. It says, Teach me to trust in you with all of my heart, to lean not on my own understanding, I must not forget, you won't give me what I can't bear. Take me out of the dark, oh Lord, I don't want to be there. <sighs> it still gives me goosebumps until today when I remember those lyrics in that time when the Holy Spirit just touched me using that song. Those words from Scripture I know now just cut through my heart and released a dam of tears. You know, tears of regret at first, but tears of gratitude it was for the Lord. Because through the song, I'm, the words, I must not forget, you won't give me what I can't bear. Take me out of the dark, oh Lord, I don't want to be there. You know, it, it just 
captured my heart and reassured me. And it was through this concert failure that God brought me back to zero to break me and my ego. You know, ego, my mentor used to tell me, uh, who was a seminary um, uh, graduate, he used to tell me that ego means edging God out. That was, that's what ego means. And I, that's what I was doing. All my life before that, prior to that, I was edging God out. I was, you know, I would receive invitations from, from classmates or friends to go to Bible studies or prayer meetings. And, and I would always say, sorry, dude, but I'm busy. And whenever they would invite me, one of those friends got so tired and frustrated with me that he said, you know what, Ardy? You can't keep on running away from Jesus. Wow. <laughs> I should have. I should have been hit by that. But instead, what I said was, maybe that's true, but I'm going to run away as long as I can because I'm having too much fun. Amazing hard-headedness, right? So it broke my ego. And so without the hindrance now of an ego, I was brought to that Bible study with my girlfriend, who then later on became my wife. And that's where I heard the good news. And that's where I surrendered my life to Christ. And I remember, I remember having this hunger to read the Bible uh, that night after I received Christ. You know, I remember <clears throat> waking up in the morning and reading the Bible for three, four, five straight hours. And, and the living word transformed me. I could no longer lie or cheat and, and, or lust uh, and watch pornography. I couldn't do that anymore. The Holy Spirit just convicted me and, and, and he got and convicted me. And, and what I did was I burned my, my porn collection. <laughs> and then I learned to apply the Bible and that turned around my life. Uh, you must realize that before that, my plan was to be the Hugh Hefner of the Philippines, was to bring Playboy uh, magazine uh, to the Philippines. So that was my plan, to be the Playboy publisher of the Philippines. Yeah. So that was a long time ago. So that's what happened. God introduced a new way of living for me. And so I pledged sexual purity with my then girlfriend, the one who brought me to that Bible study. And she, uh, her name was Ting Ting, became my wife, you know. The losses that we had incurred during that concert, God caused everything to work out for the good and brought everything back. And we also became business partners. You know, we were becoming very successful in our direct selling business that we set up. And, and we were also at the same time growing our faith. But then Ting Ting became very sick with life-threatening systemic lupus. And she should have died that time. That was the year 2000. But God granted her a healing miracle and gave her a second life, a second chance. Our finances, though, after that, um, God restored our finances. And then because of that sickness, we were back to zero again. Almost zero. You know, our, she was out of the ICU, but our finances were in the ICU. Uh, as the sickness and hospitalization of Ting Ting sucked all of our savings. But the miracle healing, though, became a book called The Heart of Healing. And it encouraged us even more in our faith to trust in the Lord with, yes, all of our heart and lean not on our own understanding. So with little money but faith in our big, big God, we proved faith, who proved faithful and worthy of all our trust and praise, Ting Ting and I, Ting Ting and I decided to make another go of business. So we decided to let go of our direct selling business, which was stressful to her, and start another business. And the business we decided to get into, we realized was right in our backyard. We had learned to promote and organize small public seminars for my, for my father, who was then a professor of marketing, you know, as a sm small sideline or side hustle. So my question to you guys is this. Perhaps, what has God already given you in your own backyard, so to speak, so that you could start a new venture or ministry? Many times we look for opportunities, but we don't realize that it's right in front of us or right in our backyards. So Ting Ting and I prayed and we had that aha moment. We, 
we we said we would start up that hides that we would scale up that side hustle that God had already blessed us with, and we would start a new business that would organize seminars and conferences. And we also prayed for a name, and the name that came on that uh, Sunday service when the pastor called the flock to be salt and light of the world. So there, we had a name and a tagline: Salt and Light Ventures, bringing out the best in you. You know, I did mention that we had. Little money, but big dreams powered by faith in our big God. And we had the name registered. We had two desks in our uh, garage or the uh, driveway of our garage. We had an old laptop connected to a dial-up internet. And we had a fax machine. I don't know if you guys remember what fax machines look like. But we still didn't know how exactly to start the business, so we prayed. And I'll pause here for dramatic effect. Because this is where the important crossroad moment happens. This is where the story gets to an important God moment. And I don't want you guys to miss it. So take a deep breath. (sighs) So one evening, sitting in our home office, I started to pray and ask God for wisdom. I asked, Lord, how do you want us to start this business? And guess what? God answered. He said, Give. I heard. That's what he said. He impressed upon my heart. I heard him say, give. And so I asked, okay, Lord, give what? And he said, give away the capital. Capital. I said, okay, how much, Lord? I asked in my mind. And the Lord said, all of it. All of it. Okay, all the capital that we had saved and set aside was about maybe in US $2,000, okay, or 80,000 pesos during that time. Maybe a small amount for many of you, but for me and my wife, that was big because that was all that we had. And what happens next is that my wife walks in a few minutes later as I ponder the conversation with God. I tell her about it and she says, okay, let's do it. If God can heal me and restore my body from lupus, what more money? I married well. (laughs) Someone much wiser than I am. And then she leaves and walks back inside the house. So I take out, I take out the checkbook and I know that I have to obey right away. Question. When God asks you, to do something. Do you delay or do you do it right away? Yeah, you can go ahead. Type in the chat box right away or delay. Or right away or delay because I need to pray about it. You know, I remembered once that uh, a mentor told me before that delayed obedience is actually disobedience. Because, you know, or sometimes God tells us to do something like forgive or give or go here or go there and share. But we either delay or modify the command given to us to fit our convenience or comfort. But guys, remember what Samuel told King Saul. He said, obedience is better than sacrifice. Hmm. So back to my story, it was clear that God had spoken to my heart. He said, give it all. So I prayed again to ask God where to give the capital away. And I wait and God leads. An hour later, I I end up writing two checks. And that same night, I drove to the orphanage in our neighborhood. And with a smile, imagining how this check might elicit some praise the Lord's from the Christian couple taking care of the orphans and babies, I drop a $1,000 check in their mailbox. And when I come back, I wrote a second check for another $1,000 and put it in an envelope ready to be mailed the next day to a Christian missionary training and sending organization called ACM or Asian Center for Missions. And I think you know, or you might know what happens next. So maybe you can write in the chat box what you think happened next. A, I bought a lottery ticket, a lottery ticket, and God blessed me and I won $1 million in the lottery. Or B, 
A journalist finds out what I did and it becomes viral, making me so famous that I run for public office and I win a seat in the Philippine Senate. Or C, I write a book called Give It All and it becomes a number one international bestseller and wins the Nobel Prize for Literature. Or D, go ahead, write your own answer. Okay, so what do you think happened, really? You think God made me win the lottery? <laughs> no. <laughs> it was better than winning the lottery or winning a seat in the Senate. That big night when God told me, you know, to give it all and we obeyed for the next few days, you know, guess what happens? The coolest thing, God just downloads wisdom to me. He downloads it in 5G. So many ideas on how to start the business, on what kind of seminars and conferences to start. So many creative ideas on how to bootstrap and market and start Salt and Light. And, and then speakers I started to invite were all saying, yes, sponsors were coming in. God's favor was upon us. And believe it or not, with less than $40 that was left in my wallet, we generated millions and millions in sales by writing sales letters for seminars that were marketed in a very out-of-the-box kind of way at that time. It was called email. <laughs> Remember, this was the year 2001. And I was using a dial-up server and fax machine, okay, versus doing radio advertising and newspaper advertising, which the competition was using. This was 20 years ago. So the first seminar and conference that I launched within weeks uh, and I realized when I did my income statement, I realized that the profit from our first few months of operation is 10 times more the amount of the capital that God told us to give away. <laughs> Amazing. And God never stopped giving back and rewarding our obedience. And so giving and trusting became our new way of living. And this reminds me of this promise of God in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And it says, And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. You know, the business, blessed us with, the business that God blessed us with became our marketplace ministry, a platform to proclaim the good news in our public seminars and trainings. And it never stopped giving us a profit, along with two other profitable, profitable spin-off businesses until I sold it after my first wife, Ting Ting, passed away when lupus struck her back in 2012 and 2013. But, you know, I know that many of you will start thinking about the principle of sowing and reaping. <clears throat> and some might even venture into using this story for a prosperity gospel kind of illustration. So may that not be the case. Because the big idea that I want to emphasize here is God's wisdom and purpose for wanting me to give away all the capital. Okay? I want you to look and, and look at the emphasis. It was God's wisdom and purpose. That was the, that's what, that's what he wanted me to do. That's what he wanted me to get out of this. In giving away all the capital, he wanted me to have his wisdom and his purpose. And, and so this is not a story and lesson about, you know, give and it will come back to you, press down, shaken together and running over. Although it could be. But I don't want the real purpose to escape you. That God's purpose for instructing me to give away all the capital we had was to bless us with wisdom and knowledge on how to make things become big with little or less or almost nothing for His glory. Just like the two fish and five loaves that the little boy gave to Jesus to feed the 5,000. Yes, God wanted to know, wanted us to know, that indeed, less is more. Because the less money or resources you have to start with, the more innovative, hardworking, and dependent you become on God. And I've had to learn that the hard way again last year 
in April 2020 when I came back from facilitating a, a workshop in Hawaii. I was in quarantine for 14 days and, and had time to take stock of things. With retail and mall-based businesses and the hardest hit, the pandemic hastened the closure of practically all of our food stalls, franchises, and school-based kiosks. You know, one new franchise was opened in February, the, and the other one the week before the lockdown in March 2020. My, my wife, my new wife, Mary and I, had poured millions and millions of capital into the food businesses and franchises in the pa previous past five years. And now, all of that was lost. And we were back to starting with zero again. Well, yes, by the way, after Ting Ting, my first wife of 17 years died in January 2013, God restored my family life 15 months later when I got married again to a Miss Universe first runner-up. But most of all, a godly woman who is passionate about sharing the gospel. You can check out our story in our YouTube channel, Life with Miriam and Ardi, if you're curious about how God brought together, you know, <laughs> <laughs> a low-key, simple-looking man like me with a beauty queen and celebrity. But back to the story. So again, five or six years ago, I had ambitions of becoming a big-time food and juice kiosk entrepreneur with hundreds of stores. So, because actually I wanted to show my new wife that I could build another successful business. And I envisioned the stores would be like a money-making machine for me and my family. Yeah. But now, looking back, I would have been better off starting small and investing little by little. I would have been more creative, more reliant on bringing profit uh, because of hard work instead of pouring in more money and more capital. And I would have been more discerning and reliant on God for success. Question, how many of you are familiar with the saying, hindsight is 20-20? Well, you know, I realize that hindsight is not 2020 if you refuse to look back with the magnifying glass of wisdom. Yes. And so God says in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 9, you must be very careful not to forget the things you have seen God do for you. Keep reminding yourselves and tell your children and grandchildren as well. Question. How do you not forget the things God has done for you? Have you recorded, recorded or shared this through the written word? Maybe we should write down the stories and lessons that God has given us so that the next generation doesn't forget. Looking back, I do regret that I was a fool, not remembering the lessons that God had given me before. That less is more. You know, if I had hung out more with wise men and humbly sought their counsel, I would have been wiser and if I had listened to God and obeyed His counsel, I would have avoided this situation. You know, question for the man, who do you hang out with? Why do I ask? Because the Bible says in Proverbs 13 verse 20, Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. It matters who you hang out with. I think that if I had sought the counsel of wise men, I would have avoided many mistakes. And seriously there, seriously, there were so many mistakes that I had made. But that's my tuition fee and perhaps another book in the making about this failure. And so, fast forward to the day, we're restarting with much, much less capital than five years ago. The capital that we used to start up our food businesses are all gone, zero, even negative. In the meantime, we started a couple of ventures that are home-based. And we've given up our office, our commissary, and practically all of our mall-based stores, about 19 or 20 in all. And now we operate on much less. And you know what? There is much less stress. If my ambition in 2015 was to add big-time food entrepreneur to my uh, biography or, or resume of Entrepreneur of the Year when I was in Salt and Light, you know, today my ambition it's like what the Apostle Paul's call to us in the Bible is this, to lead quiet and simple lives. He says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11, Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. 
and attend to your own business and work with your hands. I must confess that I am quite happy and content now living this relatively quiet and simple life as compared to before the pandemic, running so many businesses, speaking and traveling all over the Philippines and the world. And when I look around me, he tells me, son, I have already provided for you. And that includes my family. You know, if we, if we choose to live a simple life, then he has truly provided for all of our needs. Remember, Philippians 4.19 says, And my God will provide for all of my needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Note that it says, all of our needs, but not all of our wants. So what God has taught me during this pandemic is this, is that Jesus plus nothing is everything. Christ, Christ should be enough for me and should be enough for you. Christ should be enough for our family as well. And yes, like many of you, perhaps the less time outside caught in traffic and, tr and travel means that we have more time to share the gospel online. So aside from the many speaking invitations, whether for the, um, for the church or government or business, my wife and I have shared the gospel to thousands of people during this pandemic. And many more opportunities have opened up also in our own church when we launched the Go Viral Discipleship Program using the simple Obedience-Based Bible Study or OBBS. You know, thousands of new online Bible study groups have been formed and are rapidly being duplicated all over the world. It's a new way of life. And God has given us so much opportunity during this pandemic to help end the worst kind of poverty, gospel poverty. So question, how are you using your God-given talents, time, and treasure to help share the good news of Jesus Christ and end gospel poverty in your own family, community, or network? With less of the busyness of before, I now have more time with my wife and my children. And by the way, let me share some good news with you. My wife just gave birth to our third child. It's our second baby with, uh, uh, with me. Uh, and our baby Ezekiel is now three months old. So with my first wife, Ting Ting, we adopted Joshua. And now with Miriam, we now have two uh, baby boys both miracle boys okay of course joshua is also a miracle baby through the miracle of adoption and so miriam at the age of 46 gave birth i'm 55 so that's basically the modern day equivalent of sarah and abraham <laughs> right so god calls us to have less travels and businesses to handle so that we would have much more time to make a baby <laughs> yes it's true we have Less or zero sleep, but more smiles and more joy. Truly, in God's economy, less is more. And when you are back to zero, your eyes are focused on the real hero, the Messiah, who died to save you and me from, from sin and who lives so that we may live an abundant and full life with Him now and for eternity. Now, I don't know if God will bless those of us who are back to zero, like Job, restoring and even doubling what was lost. But whatever happens, I will continue to praise the one who counsels us with the most precious wisdom that we can find in John chapter 3, verse 20. That he must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less. So for those of you who are still out there listening and God is speaking to you through this talk, through this message, make sure you take action and do what it is that God is asking you to do. And for those of you who are back to zero or just at zero and the burden feels so heavy, yes, Jesus is inviting you to give that burden to him. Remember his invitation. It's a standing invitation and there's no expiry. He said, come to me, all of you who are weary and heavily laden, and I will give you rest. So if you're tired of carrying the load of having nothing left, surrender it all to Jesus. And please don't wait until you are back to zero to discover the blessings that less is more, that Jesus plus nothing is everything. 
So will you think about what we discussed? My prayer is that you will in turn surrender all your burdens, everything to Jesus. You have nothing to lose except your pride and your ego. So just cry out to him and put your trust in him and you'll experience the peace that goes beyond all understanding. Thank you. And now, I'd like to introduce you to a person who has also experienced having almost everything in the world, what she thought she wanted, and would make her happy but did not. A person who was on top of the world, or rather the universe, one day and then at the bottom of the pit the next day, in a pit of depression and even on the brink of suicide. Someone who did call out to Jesus to save her. Well, I'll let her share her story. Please welcome my wife, Miss Universe 1999, first runner-up, Miss Miriam Kimbao Roberto. <laughs> 